to the virtual book launch for iHeart Blog. Um, I think we're really excited now that we have designed a space here to hold a somewhat unconventional or, or strange launch. But what's, what our thinking is, is that this virtual space in some way reflects the book itself. So it's a, it's a spatial sequence through different chapters and essays of the book with passages and with uh, fragments of the objects that are there. And in some ways, even though it's a bit strange, perhaps, all these avatars and us all speaking in this manner, it also represents a little bit the way uh, this book is strange and unique in that it's uh, both physical and digital work. So that's why we wanted to hold something like this rather than a traditional Zoom call. And I think that maybe our idea for today is to just briefly speak a little bit about the publication that's come out now um, and then have a discussion about that publication with the curators of the Magazine Gallery here in Vienna who have been very supportive of this project from really from the beginning. They were one of the first um, the first places we exhibited our work and, and one of the first places that we started uh, in on our hybrid of both physical and digital uh, and augmented works. So that's why we thought it was particularly important uh, or particularly nice that they joined us here today. Um, so when that's finished, that should take probably around half an hour to 40 minutes. And when that's finished, we will give a small tour of this virtual space where we'll walk through the different, the different areas. So maybe Sean, you want to just, uh, or Sasha, just give an overview of the book and, and what, you know, what we've gone through to get it published and everything like that. Um, yeah, so I maybe guess. Maybe I can start. First of all. Oh, yeah, you go. Sorry. Yeah, you go. Um, so this book, this book started this project, Ahar Blob, uh, four or four years ago. And with uh, basically the every day is uh, on Instagram while also exploring your uh, theoretical architectural concepts. So I guess the first uh, 300. Um, objects, uh, which is seasons, three different seasons, uh, and features uh, a graphic, a blog, a rendering, and so uh, philosophical, architectural theory text where we try to um, kind of pose, pose a question, um, give a, give our overview and answer, and then uh, comments from there. Um, yeah. I think um, maybe just to add on from that. At the beginning, we, we started primarily as a, I guess, as a social media, um, yeah, design, not so much a platform, but uh, account, I guess, where we started to show and start to basically ask questions and put um, statements and uh, criticize or critique um, the architecture, the state of it today. And we basically got a lot of like really interesting feedback from, from people who started to follow us, where we start specific types of um, philosophical content or architectural theory and people I guess really, really enjoyed that aspect of pairing an image with a piece of text. And they were always short and digestible, testing up a title, uh, a pretty bold, I guess, question, um, a sort of analysis to, to back up that question. And some, and some, are, some were open ended and some were really uh, hard hitting answers. And because I guess a lot of controversy in Facebook feeds at the very beginning where we had a lot of discussions with people, but it was also a way in which we were able to engage with so many people over um, over years that we've been working on this project um, and get a lot of feedback and actually develop discourse for us. That was like super, super exciting and super, super nice as well to have that, that dial many people. Uh, about art, something we thought that when we started that was really lacking 
food and after that actual um, discourse. And I think maybe, Sean, then the, just the last thing to say before we, oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no. Well, I was just going to no, say the last thing. <laughs> we obviously have a delay. Go for it. Um, I was I was going to say that I think the last thing to note here is that with this publication, it's been uh, quite a few works, uh, quite a few uh, years, even at this point in the making, and we are really thankful um, that, because it took a lot of people to really get this pushed pushed through. So we are thankful, of course, that uh, we had some amazing contributors: uh, Greg Young, Kutana Yatra, Space Popular, uh, Andrew Witt, um, Gerald Bass. Uh, who who wrote pieces for us that provided a lot of context of the short form text which we have throughout the text throughout the book and also to to the Angavante the Institute of Architecture and to Berkhauser who who really never let this uh, project bite the delays in it uh, to to Rosita to Andrea to Studio Lynn and all of these people that that honestly this book went out them going quite above and beyond what uh, what they needed to do for a normal publication. So I think we're very lucky with Tad um, in getting these works um, and their digital counterparts produced. So I thought, uh, but but maybe that's just the last we have a discussion about it with with the guys from Magazine and, and with any questions that the audience uh, has. Uh, so maybe Matthias or Jerome, you guys want to, <laughs> you want to um, start, start the discussion? Andy, am I really tall? Matthias, Jerome, anybody yeah. there? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, ah, no, okay. we cannot hear Matthias. Matthias, where are you? Oh. Matthias, are you okay? He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, says, can uh, you hear me? Matthias, we can no, hear thanks you. a lot for inviting us. I mean, we are very happy to uh, be part of this. Uh, we had the chance already to have a look inside of your book, so uh, it's uh, it's also quite exciting to see how you uh, how you designed this a bit to the to the structure of the book. Maybe we can talk about. Uh, how you transformed uh, these elements from your Instagram feed, actually. This is where you first published all these objects, actually, yes. And uh, how you transformed the structure of the book uh, into this kind of non-linear catalog. Mm -hmm. Where's, uh, Are we there? Okay. Sasha, you and I? I I guess uh, our, our work always, as, as it was mentioned before, is structured in a, an image and a text in a season before. So it's said 100 days, 100 objects for a particular uh, brief we would set up for us. First 100 objects we, we started with and which, which are pictured in the book were uh, abstract abstract objects, uh, no floor planes, environments, nothing, so just objects in, in itself, basically. And you would be able to see uh, this kind of transition when, you, when you're going to do your uh, little tours through this space. Um, then the second season we worked with, we slowly add, started adding these, um, uh, a floor, basically, how the objects uh, meet the floor and and people and that's uh, kind of changed the object itself and the style you, you would be able to see and the third season with in the book and in the exhibition space is started um, designing the actual floor where the object meets the floor so I guess it's uh, like the 
question and which makes sense to actually um, I guess I mean be someone with a graphic design concept within the book and corresponds to uh, her blog style she's done a brilliant job uh, arranging the objects But I think also maybe what's interesting is like this this nonlinear reading mm -hmm. is part of the, the concept of the of the whole well, of the book and of the whole project because part of the Iborn text, of course, it's it's not the usual way that you would convey these these really deep ideas. I mean it's very difficult to speak about Deleuze in two hundred and twenty five. So part of the idea was that our society is really becoming so fragmented and this becomes the new form of information consumption, tweets and so how does how does one look at understanding information on a deeper level when the text is so short? Our way of thinking about this is that essentially all of these small text moments that you you pick up and only through their their aggregated consumption, you start to form an idea about the architecture uh, concepts or or the and I think for for us that that was somewhat important in the reading of this in the reading of this book um, of this project. So we thought it's it's quite nice that you could open to any page of the book and you can get to maybe a short idea. But it's really in reading, even in a nonlinear way, reading so many of these idea apps and at times conflict with each other that you would start to get an idea of architecture philosophy here. And then that's encapsulated in a somewhat way within a longer text uh, that we wrote in our, in our piece. Uh, how here, how do you read the transition a book. The linearity of time pretty could be one thing. What does it mean now the book and I would almost say it's like the retrospect of a look that I think was done on the uh, 2016 object 225th of 17, so it's like three years away. <laughs> what does it mean to publish of the last object on the August format? I think I for think us, it's worth um, mentioning that. learning to base arguments and discuss it with other people and I guess now it's you can see it and also with uh, the way <laughs> we're trying to focus on augmented reality within architecture now yeah but maybe Sasha also I think what you're what you're saying is also a bit that 
in a way, the book gives us a different, like a different uh, format to look through the same work that was at times uh, generated on a on a daily basis without thought of their interlinkages. And one of the things that I found personally interesting about putting the book together is how do we arrange the different passages, not necessarily in the same linearity or sequentially that they appeared on the Instagram feed, and even how they would sit in relationship to some of these uh, more deeper and theoretical conceptual texts that we had. So I, I, I don't know, it, it's interesting that somehow, although there's an overlap of uh, I mean, of course, like you point out, Sasha, all of the, the augmented reality overlays are new information that comes in here. But there's so much in principle that's, that's in print uh, media that you're, you're kind of forced to think about what is, the, what is the concept of that organization that doesn't really come in the same way an Instagram feed does. Yeah. I guess also one of the things that we, we've always spoken about there's a self-awareness, like we are true that we criticize um, slow forms of information, or <laughs> the IE, the book, or and yeah, we, we have we are in the book like, we have, okay. yeah. 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 yeah, the whole essay is the whole essay is the speed at which architecture is is written. Yeah, so I, I think I think being completely self that no more are the medium, uh, the fact that we are fully aware that that is incredibly shown in the fact that it took us almost six years to go from the beginning to the uh, from like when we started producing, we actually went through the process. And there's something really funny about that because architecture itself is incredibly slow a medium or as a, as a profession after it, right? But I think it's really important to be super self-aware that we are still in this um, to acknowledge that even the, the things like magazines, which are obviously way faster than a publication, like a full book, right out of the day. So our, our essay, I think that's uh, which basically focuses on that self-awareness that things are caused and that we need to actually address that. Um, it would be how that's actually affecting our... But I, I, I guess also... Uh, sorry? Time, 
I think we have found um, things, we've found ways to put things into this process that we couldn't otherwise have in social media. And we see, for example, the idea of the app being something that could be constantly updated. So this could be still a living, um, a living object. The book could be a living object in itself in that with new updates, we could feed in new information and new overlays into the, into the work, which maybe in some ways helps um, that acceleration. Yeah, I feel the exact same like that. When we were add to the book that makes the book real time, like uh, it was a uh, slow pace, but essentially, I think the, the app being real time is super important for us because without that app, we don't have the way of updating um, production of information that we can actually add to the app. Um, it's constantly updating, and I think that's one that's really important for us. Like recently, we we actually we built like a small pavilion, and once the pavilion is gone, then is reality content that was left over. Um, so the pavilion, even though it's physical and it's gone, if it are out of um, removed because it was only there for the augmented content was gone essentially and. For us, that was something that was super into as app project, but also was now for the book, was the augmented reality, the real time updating uh, pieces of information distribute. Uh, how would you actually describe between uh, the written and, and the visual context? Of, this, uh, of course, every object is paired with this, with this small essay, let's say, and, but uh, this uh, to be understood as, as a description of what you see, but they are they express like more general thoughts about actually. So how do you see this relation between those two elements? Well, I guess from, so we always look at the, the image and the text as as equally important, but yeah, exactly, that we're in a, um, directly correspond with each other all of the time, um, quite a lot of the time they do. So sometimes and then the image will actually come after the text, after the thinking is uh, finished. Um, but then also, like you said, it's not descriptive, but rather thinking about uh, the way, the means and how we're producing something or thinking about an architectural theory and through uh, design form. As and well. I would say, that I would say that between like Yeah, and I would say that sometimes there's more connection perhaps than you, than, than is, is noticeable because the important is that the connection doesn't need to be explicit, but there, there is because they are always prepared. There is some connection there. So I remember offhand, I don't remember which object it is, but there was an object that looks fairly arranged, and it was uh, made with an MRI scanning software. And the the text that accompanied it, whether we can misappropriate uh, misappropriate tools from other professions of seeking new formal innovation. And I think on the surface, because it's not explicit, this object was made with a, with a medical uh, software for, for brain scan. It makes two completely disconnected things, where in reality, there is a, there is a linkage there. And I think simply each corresponding text and its image were prepared at the same there was a common uh, thread somewhere, you know, it being it could have been a particular formal uh, investigation that we were going through. And, and of course, those are stronger than others. But I think there is something interesting in the, even almost in the other connection between uh, an object and its, its text. While a lot of objects <clears throat> and texts were quite charged <laughs> and uh, quite a strong opinion on some in that way you would look at the object you would be able
able to that kind of wave connection and that kind of way. So it's not a text above the floor. It's not as direct. You it would be more as an abstract. How would you character? You have a few big enemies or opponents in 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 this. Uh, Chris 273 object. One, for example, would be Schumacher's parametricism 2.0. Like, could you talk a bit about this kind of main uh, opposing concepts or how you deal with them? Where is Sean? Sean wants to answer that. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a uh, sure. I'll, I'll answer that. I'll, I'll keep it PG. <laughs> no, I think for us, we were, we were always in a system that is born from a parameterizing, minimizing notion of architecture. And for us, we ensure those tools think, for developers and people that want to make the demo because they can and calculate the square uh, square meter are more uh, um, ensure there's been innovative work done in terms of pavilions often turn into nice folded or uh, structures. But I guess for us that we were always that notion that architecture should be purely parameting. My, so I think for us, we are look like misuse most of these these tools to create new architecture rather than to just all the already exists, or even even worse, to optimize sure until architecture doesn't exist. Um, and I think that's one of the things that we've looked at. Schumacher's parametrism has become a little bit of a, an enemy for us. I guess. In terms of Sean, Sean, would you would you also would you also sort of talk about? I know one of the things we've mentioned before is this the emphasis that um, that parametricism is brought to, which is on the, on the one hand uh, important, but comes at the expense of the end result of the design. And so I think. Um, it's some of the objects that we have in this publication. There was a real spatial uh, or formal manifestation thing. And it was in ways, um, era, so it was looking at the object itself. I mean, uh, especially looking, even reading a lot into the, to the theory of triple O about sort of the, the alone uh, piece in which uh, in which we would consider the, the work, the process by which we get there. Because I think one of the good parametricism is there, and it's not it's not a system, but it happens a lot in parametric projects, a helper script, for example, that, that generated this thing generated. And I think that the, there's a trap there with parametricism, always the cognizance that what really matters is the end result and not um, not just the, the method by which you pick. Yeah, exactly. So you could compare it to as um, you could compare it to as uh, like the CNC in Italy the manufacturing became interesting because there were but then the same thing happened with they were interesting for the first when we realized these are slowly becoming possible. When they are possible, you can actually argue and see build or put together with some sort of um, manufacturing because that is built interesting. And it is at the beginning when it comes to change to be set for our metric system where when we were able to produce the type of piece from like Ben said, uh, extrapolate this and, and so on. Even just for the, the sake of new, new technology or new, new formal assets, we weren't talking about it so much that it was actually possible. The outcome line, but not really not by the process because. Oh, art 
uh, he seems kind of crazy. <laughs> the other, yeah, you're probably I think I'm also at the point where right now everything is architecture and art and art so fascinated with that composition and making of um, cheese. Deny, try something else in, in order to come to find the visual language of architecture. I think one my last about it once. What is the political implication? Think about that. Um, yeah, I can I can speak to it. So, uh, in in some ways, I think that the 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 nature the political nature i mean not even just the around us is is really changing because new technology and social media and we felt in many ways um architecture just seems to these these trends and um you know it, to, to put it maybe more more bluntly that there's these diluted high builders Within within architecture communities, not everywhere, but but it's still a pretty solidly firm way. And I think what we are trying to trying to do is look forward. That is in in some ways uh, more decentralized. That we look at new tools. That's why we look at um, social media platforms. That's why we look at uh, different forms. That we are perhaps trying to make architecture. Um, a little bit more open, a little bit more accessible, and a little bit less uh, hierarchical and and reliant on this idea from you know from Anne Rand that that uh, there is a, a strong old white male uh, said from you know you're a white male, but that that this is this is changing, and that architecture to stay relevant needs to start changing too because are are here to stay and um, this kind of new new society is here to stay and so if we don't start to embrace then somebody else will and and all of a sudden what should be a job of designing space like what we are what we are in here now a virtual there's architecture thought that goes into this but if architects uh, engage with this these types of new mediums and these then uh, other people will, and it might be an ad or PR marketing firm that begins to build these, um, and then architects much less to to do. Sean or Sasha maybe wants to add. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, um, I think I think you spoke a little bit. I I hear conversation there because I was uh, working in the with my friends. <laughs> Vision and technologies and, and not the adopt adoption. Uh, do you think maybe it makes sense to just I guess if there's also any... just to add on from what's that? Oh, you I was I was just. Um... You said that you get uh, a certain type of criticism. What the main criticism you get from architects? Your work gets. I guess quite a lot of the time. I, I guess quite a lot of the times that, that that we've had criticism is more that that it isn't architecture, or that we're trying to skew the idea of what architecture is, and and mold it into what what we think architecture is. 
much as a criticism that appears on the on the surface for us that's actually i guess it means that we're doing our job correctly because if you're scaring or frightening architects it's the ones that need to change that are being frightened it's the ones that are clinging on to their past relics of uh, the architectural production so i think for us we're we're quite happy with those critiques but they come <laughs> And, and one thing we've had quite a bit was um, or, or one of the discussion we've had colleagues as well, that the production of tools. So for us, like we are really interested in producing our own tools. And there's been a lineage for architecture using tools like what Ben said, misusing MRI tools. Um, in, in the 90s, it was obviously misusing animation tools and film tools. And now we're more looking at misusing game tools. For instance, the space that we're in right now. For us, we are really interested in actually designing our own tools because tools we actually won't be able to contribute to how uh, how they're designed and how and how they're actually used within things like cities, where people are actually designing games to design cities, where designers that are designing this and they don't have the same background in space and uh, spatial thought that that architects do and we think it's actually contributing to this um we're not going to get that seat at the table essentially but sean i mean i we've yeah i i think it's quite funny yeah. we had an architect no, uh, we had a we had an architect a very very uh, even arguably famous architect tell us one time that for him, architecture needs to have four walls and a roof. And otherwise it's not a discussion about it being oh, architecture. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, and I think, you know, for us, that's that's such an antiquated notion. It it really we we couldn't disagree more with that as the definition of architecture today. Um, but but you know, that was a major professor in um, in the US and somebody who who is uh, very influential well because of, of and well respected. And I think that in some ways shows the distinction that we have and maybe why why some architects look at our work, uh, these kind of virtual worlds and, and augmented reality and and weird ephemeral objects and think you know, this is this is not four walls and a roof, and this is a distraction from what they believe architecture is. We just think that 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 is not a that is not where architecture is going, and not even where it is now. And if it is not the architecture, then what is it always? Yeah, and and it's and. <laughs> But but what is the role? I mean, what what Sean got to there in the end? I mean, what is the role of the architect? It is about designing space and experience and form, and there is no part of that that is requisite for a uh, physical built structure that cannot also be present in especially things like AR and VR environments, which is where people are experiencing more architecture. You know, you, the, the average person, ex, I think there is something about, you know, experiencing more architecture, for example, online than you experience in, in reality because you go through so many images because you, you play video games. So, you know, the, the role of the architect is changing. And I think some people don't want to accept that, but it's going to change regardless. Do you, does it make sense now because we are running up uh, about 15 minutes left that if there's some questions we could um, we could answer that and otherwise we can give a tour of the space do you think or yeah I think Wil Wilhelm always has uh, questions <laughs> <laughs> I could ask a question Is Wilhelm uh, yeah yeah do you hear me can you hear me <laughs> yeah we hear you yeah. Yeah, I yeah, got it. Um, You're always good for a question. Yeah, I don't know. How did you manage to put everything <laughs> under like the polygon count that is possible in Mozilla? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it's actually we're, we're pretty good everything is like flat planes it's uh it's a little sad i think if you see the the overall nothing has very much thickness yeah but it's a big, really big space i'm surprised that you still have a, at least some details in the more three-dimensional stuff yeah so. yeah i think all of the the, the objects that we have are all really low poly or reduced quite a bit um but yeah i guess we tried our best to keep as much but even though it's going to be i think uh mozilla hubs request under fifty thousand polygons or something which is like really tiny i think the the whole file had to be like 10 or 12 megabytes or something like that which is which is crazy <laughs> usually we're in the hundreds and hundreds of megabytes yeah, but is it also yeah. running on mobile now? Because uh, is someone here on a mobile phone or? Yeah. It's like... Yeah, I think it was running on mobile as well, but I'm not sure if the if you can do the same controls. Um, yeah. I tried yesterday, but it was impossible yes. to communicate. Or uh, I didn't see it. I think the, the one thing that we would be interested in trying is, sorry, I used to know if someone's using um, like an Oculus Quest or something, I think that would be fun to try. At the moment, I'm just using desktop, but I think in VR, that could be a cool yeah. experience. Yeah, I guess it's just... Are, are there um, other questions? Okay. Should we do that, sir, Ben? Yeah, you want to lead the tour, Sean? I mean, you, I think you've got a pretty good uh, narration of it. <laughs> do I? Okay, uh, I guess everybody can, can follow me if uh, I think we've lost a few people that are in. If you, if you get stuck, you can fly. In the space somewhere. Yeah. But hopefully everything should be should be uh, possible to walk on, I hope. But if we come back through this door. <laughs> okay, lead the way, Sean. I'm not sure, can anyone hear me? <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, yeah, it's good. We can hear you. If someone can walk, just fly. Hi. <laughs> Hello? Somebody's in here. Frozen on my end. So I don't know where anybody is. Ben, do you Done. have a better screen? Maybe you can uh, lead it on. All right. All right. Everyone can follow me. I'll, I'll lead it on. <laughs> I know. Maybe he's fallen off. So I think we're starting here <laughs> at the entrance of the book. where we have a little bit about um, from from Bach talking about kind of the important... I guess you have to wait a bit longer for everybody to come. Oh, Otherwise they won't yeah, thank it. you. It's like the volume is not that far reach. Actually. Yeah, thanks. Is everybody here? Okay. I think we are kind of a small group. I don't know what happened to Sean and Sasha. Maybe they are... Oh, here comes Sean. I think I'm, I'm back. Okay. How's it going? All right, you want to go? Should I haven't done anything. The book? Yep. Sure, let's, let's go. Let's uh, Japanese features here. You can read that uh, later on. I think when we come in here, uh, it's going to be a lot louder for most people. If you want to turn down the background noise, there's ben, a little. I think uh... I'm just gonna... Okay. All right, I'll, I'll do it. It's fine. So um, I think here, the what we really like um, from this quote in Bach, uh, from Bach is that he just um, has been supportive of this project really from the beginning. I think when we first told him about the, the idea that we are doing this kind of um, this book with, with augmented reality 
and that it creates a connection between the new tools that we're investigating. I think he's been uh, super supportive from the beginning. So we can enter the book then here through uh, one of our more provocative texts about Rem Schoolhouse. We'll just start here. So oh, I'll wait for people. So in this room, what, what you see is just an object floating in space. Um, it has no context to it. It has no uh, scale to it because uh, even your avatars here can grow and shrink. And this is really where we started. Um, we started with purely formal experimentation um, and, and looking at kind of what what could be done. So this is where we started taking strange tools and seeing do they make new types of form or are there spaces that can emerge from um, different spatial and formal conditions that can be sculpted. But there's not really any, any thought with um, some architecture conventions of scale or function. And then if we, uh, so now we can continue on. And here we enter season two of the book. So um, here, all of a sudden, we introduce uh, the ground plane. And it's just a flat, uh, undifferentiated plane. But immediately, you have to think about whether the object touches the ground or not and how it might rest on the ground. And the second thing we introduced in the season is we introduced scale characters uh, or, or figures. And the idea here was all of a sudden, these very abstract objects started to get a much more concrete understanding by placing a person, and whether that person is the size of, a, of an ant or the size of a, of a mountain, completely changes your reading of the, of the object. So in some ways, it was a, it was a restriction uh, or a constraint, but it made us think about um, kind of these fundamental architecture ideas when we, do, when we do that. And I think what's really nice is each... <coughs> Each, um, uh, each season of the book is paired with specific texts. So for example, here, um, Michael Young's text was very relevant about how um, the schemes within architecture uh, create I, this, this kind of uncanny feeling of what is, uh, what is real and what is not real, because the same way that adding these new constraints do. And then if we kind of keep following along in here, this is just a fake room, little place to like project things. So we can go this way. I'm not sure where you are, Ben. I, I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I'm, I'm in this uh, room and then following this big uh, arrow. Because. Oh, you want to say more? Because the part does not move over on this one. Oh, um, I'm I'm at the exit to uh, to the season three. So if we if we go down here to get further, you'll have to right click to jump down or to fly. So if you hold down the right click, you can jump onto this landscape. Or if you're having trouble with that, you can do slash fly, and then you will be able to fly around the space. I'll just stand here to speak about this for a minute. So in this room, it's our third season where all of a sudden now we stop having a uh, kind of infinite plane as a landscape, and we were forced to deal with how does an object meet the ground, not whether simply an object meets the ground or not. So we would also design the landscape uh, of it. I think if you look up at the wall here, you see one of the images, and you see how the landscape starts to tie in and contrast with the wall, uh, with the object itself.
I guess maybe one thing to touch on from uh, Wilhelm's comment about the polygon count, you can see the difference between uh, the object here and the object that's rendered on the wall. The polygon count is uh, quite uh, reduced, I would say. So then if we continue on, but, uh, so I hope there's some, uh, is it the same object like in this, in the room and on the wall or? I think he's disconnected, but I think, uh, it, yeah. I think it is. Um, Because I also, when I was here before, I thought it's the same thing. Like it's very interesting yeah. to see the difference between the two of them actually. Like, uh, I mean, you yeah. still get the shape and stuff of the two. Of yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and it somehow kind of even has a different feel to it in this uh, in this setting and environment. So I think if we continue on through this uh, door over here. You might have to fly or jump over. Yeah, I think flying is the, is the best way to go about it. Yeah, and then this is, uh, Sean, you wanna talk about kind of some of these other objects or should I keep going? Uh, yeah, we can just continue through this. Just a continuation of um, some of season three. Quite nice to think about if, if people are interested to read some of the text from from say Potter or from Kutan. I think Kutan's is yeah. really great actually. I think it, it kind of leads on from what we were talking about <coughs> earlier. This idea of the architect. Uh, I guess we've had that critique that architects make buildings quite a lot, um, and they don't make, I guess, virtual spaces or augmented reality spaces, which we can um, disagree with more. Um, but I guess this is one of the things that you can see slightly from from Kutan's quote from uh, Robin Evans here. Uh, make buildings; they make drawings slash representations of buildings, and I think. You could probably find that that quote's relatively old now, but even this idea that architects buildings, architects draw buildings, that's all we do. In terms of this notion that architects architecture should be four walls and a roof, um, I think is incredibly antiquated. Okay, so I think, um... We, we've actually only got two more minutes, so maybe we just continue on and we end up, um, oops. yeah, we end up at the, where we started. And the, I think because, um, oops, I'm stuck here. Sorry, let me just, uh, I think, um, yeah, maybe it's just worth here to just have a sort of a last thing. Uh, we'll still be in the room for a few minutes, I'm sure. At least, uh, at least me, Sean, and Sasha will be. But um, I know some people will jump out to go to the the next events of the festival. So it's just worth saying again that we we're, we're really grateful. Um, we're grateful to all of these people that that took time to to write for us, um, the contributors that took time to published the, the book and went far above and beyond and the Angavante for all of the support they've given us and to Magazan for being here to also kind of, um, yeah, continue to help us in this. And, and we're really excited to see what's next. I mean, you know, it's a funny critique that we rally against uh, the slowness of, of architecture print medium. And now we, we published the book, so we'll, we'll see what uh, contradiction we have in the future. So I think that's it, because I think we are over time now, um, but um, we'll stick around. So if anybody wants to chat, um, thanks so much for joining.